This is Justin with Style of Substance. During the U.S. occupation of Japan following World War II, extreme political measures were taken and changes enforced in order to rebuild the nation. In many ways, this socio-political paradigm shift gave Japan new freedoms and encouragement of progress, but in other ways, such conditioning challenged the long-held ideological leanings of the people in favor of a more westernized way of thinking. Artistic censorship was put into effect, with the occupying forces determining what can and cannot be shown in films, so that the ideological reformation of the nation would not be interrupted by the once held militant and nationalist views of Japan. Rebuilding was believed to be necessary and was accomplished through both physical and intellectual labor. The now renowned artist Akira Kurosawa began his filmmaking career during World War II. Among his first films was The Most Beautiful, which expressed his apparent ideological allegiance to his country during wartime. But once Japan surrendered, the war ended, and occupying forces began influencing how the Japanese people ought to think, the ideological interest of Kurosawa's work began to shift. Influenced by the democratic ideas of the occupying forces, Kurosawa aimed to create new reverence for the individual identity in Japanese culture. In 1946, he released No Regrets for Our Youth. Oi, Inspired by the Kyoto University incident and the Hatsumi Ozaki spy case, No Regrets for Our Youth criticizes the oppressive nature of Japan's regime before World War II. Unlike the vast majority of Kurosawa's numerous films, No Regrets for Our Youth follows a female protagonist. The politically passive Yuki is born into a place of upper-middle-class privilege and becomes infatuated with the anti-military radical Nogi. As time goes on, the two marry, but Nogi becomes arrested for his political activism in defiance to his country. Despite not actively engaging in his politics, she stands by her husband's choices and endures interrogation and mistreatment. Yuki does what she can to free her husband, but he dies, leaving her hurt and broken. And this is where one of the more fascinating themes of the film becomes a pivotal focal point, that being the significance of labor. Yuki visits Nogi's family and tells them that she is his wife, but they reject and scold her, believing she is only there to make fun of them. Instead of leaving them behind, she decides to work on the rice fields. It is through acts of manual labor that she shows them her worth and her sincerity. The scenes of labor make up a notable amount of screen time. Yuki is determined to prove herself, even if it means sacrificing her well-being. She becomes sick, but she perseveres. At one point, she carries heavy objects, but falls to the ground. And despite the laughter directed at her, she picks herself up again and carries on with her work in the rice fields. <laughs> the labor is not only used as a demonstration of the woman's strength and will to carry on, but also as a means to preserve her late husband's image. Fortunately for her, she gets some help on the fields, but she is at the brink of collapse. Perhaps the thesis of the film occurs at this one specific moment, where she is asked what is wrong, but does not answer. She continues raking the fields, but then pauses and recalls familiar words of the past. Come on, come on. 
自由の裏には苦しい犠牲と責任のあることを忘れちゃいかん。Despite the hardships and sacrifice Yuki endures in the moment, her labor is ultimately for something better, something that goes beyond herself. Once she finishes the entire field, she is taken aback, as if she sees a heavenly light as a result of her work. The women are awestruck by the sight. <laughs> Yuki faints, either from exhaustion. Or overwhelmed by her accomplishments, she has worked so hard to reach this point. Rest is a necessary conclusion. Unfortunately, the fields become vandalized, putting a great amount of the hard work seemingly to waste. However, it wasn't actually a pointless venture. Yuki proved herself worthy. She and her husband become redeemed. Despite the pain she endured while working in the rice fields, Yuki comes to enjoy this life more. While Yuki begins as relatively indifferent to Nogi's political opinions, once she begins taking on physical labor, she comes to terms with the forward-thinking ideas that her husband held. Yuki thinks about Nogi's words during the peak of her physical labor. The film comes to a close with Yuki gazing optimistically from the truck she is on, demonstrating her evolution as a character, and then, by extension, the suggestion that Japan's future will be brighter. The occupying forces not only encouraged but more or less demanded a push for reformation. Both intellectual and physical labor were necessary components in this process. This can be seen more overtly in the ways laws were passed and policies enforced, but also more intimately within the individual's worldview. The ending shows how far Japan has come, and suggests that there is much more in store. The different types of labor are intersectional and enforce one another in this character's political transformation from passivity to activeness. The film asks of us to engage and evolve politically, and no matter what comes our way, the good work we do in life should be remembered and celebrated. There should be no regrets. Special thanks to my patron Yakov Janoy. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing and sharing my work around. If you really enjoy what I do and want to be included in my credits, consider donating to my Patreon. I have plenty of projects on their way, so stay tuned. Bye.